this time. Thank you, Mr. Adler, for that presentation. Um, I know there's a lot of questions, and first for the official opposition, the New Democratic Party, Mr. Charlie Angus. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Adler. Um, just recently, your colleague Pierre Polyev insinuated that Elections Canada wears a team jersey, uh, signifying that they do their work uh, in a politically partisan manner. Have you any examples of the nine agents of Parliament you describe undertaking activities in a partisan manner? Well, thank you, Mr. Angus, for that, for that question. And, um, you know, all my bill um, lays out is that these these nine agencies have a very special role to play in Parliament and in our parliamentary democracy. In fact, as I mentioned in my, in my uh, remarks, that the, even the, ch the head of Elections Canada can't vote. Now, any examples? Well, has this uh, been I'm, a problem? You say it's an imperative, and you refer to them as so-called agents of Parliament. They're actually agents of Parliament. They're not so-called. Do you have any examples? And if this is so imperative, you should have some examples. Where? Other than your attack on Mr. Mayoran, or your colleague's attack on Mr. Mayoran, where have these agents of Parliament acted in a partisan manner? Well, Mr. Angus, I'm trying to answer your question, if you'll give me the, the time to do that. I'm, what I'm telling you is that, that my private member's bill will enhance transparency and accountability. These special agents of Parliament hold a very special responsibility in, in our parliamentary system. And so all you I'm don't have do any examples? Members bill. So, well, I'll continue on. I only have seven minutes. So you don't have any examples. Now, um, partisan activity is already prohibited under the Public Service Employees Act, but what's not included that would be different in your bill is the ability of members of parliament or the Senate to demand investigations against these agents of parliament. So your colleague, Mr. Panashawi, had to resign in disgrace because of investigations by Elections Canada. If your bill became law, would it have been possible for Mr. Panashawi to demand an investigation into whether Elections Canada was unfairly picking on him? Would, would that suffice under Section 9 of the Act? Uh, well, Mr. Angus, um, you know, I, I, quite frankly, I'm, I'm not here to comment on other members of Parliament and what they have or have not said. What I'm here to talk about is my own private... No, but I'm, I'm trying to understand 20. the bill here. So. Okay, let's say uh, Cabinet Minister X is under investigation by Elections Canada. Cabinet Minister X thinks, or say Parliamentary Secretary X says, uh, I feel violated and betrayed by an agency in which I and every other member of this place, indeed, which all Canadians must place their trust, I feel strongly that this process has been conducted, this process being an investigation by Elections Canada, with malice and contempt for me as a member and for my family's well-being. Furthermore, say, person X, parliamentary secretary to the prime minister, former parliamentary secretary, says it's a breach of his privilege being investigated for um, abusing the electoral laws of Canada. Under your act, he'd be able to make a complaint, would he not? Because right now, Mr. X, Mr. Dean Del Mastro, is unable to make that complaint. But under Section 9, he'd be able to make a complaint. Am I correct? Well, let me just, let me just tell you, uh, Mr. Angus, that... Once again, the purpose of my bill is to is to just bring answer the question. Will I'm he trying be able to? to? The Tell me, Chair, is, does he have the he power to do that? I, I read your bill. I want to know, in your opinion, does Member X, Mr. Dean Del Mastro, who feels that his rights were abused by being investigated by Elections Canada, would be able to launch an investigation against well, Mr. Elections Mr. Angus, Canada? I'm not here to comment on specific cases. What I'm here to talk about is my bill, Private Members Bill 520. And what I'm telling you is that these, these agencies hold a very unique role in our parliamentary system. I, I understand. But let me so, just tell you. So transparency, Mr. Adler. I, I like your word transparency. Now, under Section 10 of your Act, uh, these agents of Parliament, after having been called out by one of your colleagues, have, must submit a report to Parliament. Now, under this, so when Mike Duffy, your colleague Mike Duffy, and your colleague Nigel Wright were being accused of fraud, and bribery, uh, it was handed over to the Ethics Commissioner, but the Ethics Commissioner had no power to investigate Mike Duffy because he was a senator. However, Mike Duffy, tell me if I'm wrong, under Section 9, if Mike Duffy was still sitting senator, Mike Duffy would be able to demand an investigation of the Ethics Commissioner, even though the Ethics Commissioner couldn't investigate Mike Duffy. Is that not correct? You know what, Mr. Angus, this bill will protect all members of Parliament. This is not a No, but, uh, but you bill. understand this, this bill is even here to, be able to explain. This is, Would Mike this Duffy is, have been able to demand an investigation of a, the Ethics Commissioner? Because the Ethics Commissioner doesn't have the power to investigate Mike Duffy. 
Mr. Angus, I'm here to talk about not specific incidents. Mm. I'm here to talk about my bill. Okay. And so transparency. Transparency. I like your word transparency. So the Conservatives, our colleagues on the other side, have just brought changes to the Conflict of Interest Act, and they're very worried about vexatious investigations. In fact, what they're saying is that when your colleagues, your fellow Cabinet Ministers, Parliamentary Secretaries, are investigated for, you know, lobbying, uh, taking money inappropriately, that those investigations must be kept secret by the Ethics Commissioner. That's what they're calling for the Conflict of Interest changes. I don't see any obligation for this to be kept secret when one of your members wants an investigation against a member of parliament, why, or against an officer of parliament, why wouldn't you have the same protection that you would, that your colleagues are putting in for cabinet ministers? Wouldn't you think it'd be fair if you, for example, decide to make a vexatious complaint against the ethics commissioner that it would be kept secret until they, until it's being discussed? So I want to know why in transparency it's fine for you and your colleagues to attack officers of parliament but officers of parliament have to keep their investigations against your colleagues secret. Well, you know Why is that I, missing? Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not here to talk about other pieces of legislation, other proposed legislation. But the don't bill, you think it would be good to have that to protect against vexatious complaints? This is to protect all members of parliament, not just any one particular party. So when, when, a, when a member of parliament or a senator suspects Suspect. that, a, that, a, that a member of one of these agencies acted in a partisan manner, they may request, they can request of the head of that agency to conduct an investigation. But you, have, you're not, the you haven't given us any example other than the attack on Market Merritt. You don't have any example. Talk. Actually, you've only got about 30 seconds left. Okay. Uh, if you want to complete Quick, your, no, uh, I'm going to let Mr. Adler conclude his remark. Uh, you, were you finished your comment? Well, thank you, Chair. Just let me just say that the member of parliament or the senator can ask the head of the agency to conduct an investigation. If the head of that agency deems it worthwhile, deems it says in the in the proposed bill it says may conduct an investigation. If they seem that on the I guess a prima facie case that there is evidence of a political agenda, partisan you know partisan um, activity, then that that head of that agency can conduct an investigation and make those findings available to both the Speaker of the House and the Speaker of the Senate, all very public. And you'd be able to do that as a smear? You could just put that out as a press release saying that you think Elections Canada is yeah. unfairly targeting Mr. Panashaway, Mr. Dean Del Mastro? I'm afraid you're, I'm afraid you're out of time, Mr. Thank Angus. You. There's no time for a response, I don't believe, to that. And the next questioner is Mr. Calandra.